Hi everyone and welcome back to Amplify, a video podcast about usual unusual people. Normally if you want to see any sort of drag performer or queer performers, you go to LGBT friendly places or you go to gay clubs, drag branches. Our today's guest is someone who is performing drag for straight people in straight places. This is something new, I have never seen it in Brussels yet or anywhere in Belgium, so I can't wait to share the episode with you. Before that, let's take a look at previously on Amplify. So I'm gonna Amplify Blanquette Like Golu. They, they are um, queer performer, drag queer performer. Um, they're working on the new show, drag show on, on Brussels. And they have like a very Good energy, a lot of stuff to say about politics and about gender. He's someone who like uh, are able to entertain you and to make you think about stuff. Hi, Blanquet. Before starting anything, I would love to ask, uh, what are your pronouns? Uh, they, them. They, them. Okay. So, mm-hmm. Blanquet, I am uh, he. What do we see? He. Just can I say just he? He, him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I know you from Elliot, the only Prigari, because he, I had him, uh, I had him them on the show uh, last week. Uh, it's uh, it's a podcast which is called Amplify, which I created in 2021 because I was bored with COVID, and uh, then I realized that I really love being surrounded by creative people and also tell other people about them. So I said, okay, I'm going to keep it going. And uh, as a trademark of of my podcast, I have a a question at every end of the episode. Who do you want to amplify? Which means that you give the torch to someone. You can give the visibility to someone who you really respect or you want to to help out. So, and uh, Elliot Laprigari uh, amplified you. So I will start with what is your relationship with the, the only Prigari? Uh, it's a bit uh, special because uh, at the beginning I was like just um, very fan of La Prigari, but long time ago. Actually, they, 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 were, they were one of the first very uh, uh, politic, queer, dirty, uh, uh, dirty as fuck, uh, and very honest on the stage of Brussels. Uh-huh. And I was very fan of them, and I started my career of drag at that time. And uh, by just randomly, we were uh, both of us the same outfit from a, an amazing creator in Brussels. The name is Alois. Okay. And Alois. We finally contact each other and talk, and uh, and Elliot is handsome too. So I was like, ah, hello. And uh, and then we 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 become like we start to trust each other and uh, and to to become friends. Okay. And during the COVID, uh, the very like high point of the pan, uh, pandemic. Elliot joined me in my project of Not Allowed, Glitter's Time, a mm-hmm. collective of queer uh, artists uh, sharing stages for trans and not only, but mostly trans people uh, and drag artists. Uh, and so like, we are close and not that close, but we, we like each other like a lot. <laughs> you know what's funny? Because you both, when you speak about like my drag Career, you both do this like career, <laughs> and that, but it's just funny something similar that I found because I was just editing the episode with uh, Elliot uh, yesterday and I saw the same like career. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> so you are from Brussels originally? No, I'm a small town girl. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm from Tournai, uh, a okay. city, uh, the historic city of Belgium. Uh, uh, with like very small mentality and uh, you are bringing uh, the mentality to Tournai. Sorry, you are bringing the m- mentality to Tournai. I actually I don't go back a lot. Like I go I go back to see uh, my parents and a uh, sister and uh, and uh, and uh, her child uh, at Christmas yeah. Easter. You know, like birthday, birthday time. I like. I, I really want at that time uh, when I was teenager to emancipate myself. Yeah. It's because I, I was the the gay. The gay of Tournai. Like, you know the 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 flamboyant and the huh? and screaming and the loud gay of the city, which was cool and horrible at the same yeah. time. 
but uh, but yeah, I really wanted to a bit melt in Brussels and uh, and to meet like other queer person. Did you study in Brussels or you studied there? Oh, in Tournai, I, I come back from a, a work. Uh, or do you say ouvrier? Um, a what? Ouvrier, like my, my parents were very. Um, uh, like, uh, but it's normally it's on the factories, no? Uh, yeah, there was a my parents, uh, had a bakery. And so, like, it's, it was not about having big money, you know. So I, st- I stayed to tourne, in Tournai to uh, study advertising. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> which, which was very not for me. <laughs> and, uh, and then I come, I come to Brussels to work in advertising uh, system, which was n- very, very not for me, too. Okay. Uh, and then I, uh, I start kitchen to cook. Yeah. No chef. Oh. And uh, since five years, I'm, I'm uh, in the kitchens in Brussels. Okay. And is it like uh, Belgian cuisine or something else? It's, no, I, I I say usually that it's um, inspirational food. Okay. Because uh, it's all about, I change my menu every week, two times a week. And uh, it's small menu and uh, only with mostly uh, things and products from here. So it's mostly inspired by my uh, roots, which is Mediterranean, and uh, but do it in a way more north of Europe. Wow. Okay. It's a mix of my both cultures. So. Uh, so we have a chef and the chef who does drag. Yeah, but not for a long time. No, because I I st- I, I I say to stop to my job to only do drag. Okay. Because two two works is like just just not possible. I did that for so many times, and now I'm just tired. How did you get to start doing drag? I start drag. Um, ah, yeah. I, I also for La Frigari, I I also did a, a stage with La Frigari. One of my first first stage, which was like bad, and the technicals. Well, yeah, there was like so many technical issues. It was at La Rainbow House. Okay. They contact me because I, I, I was doing my, uh, starting my drag and I contact Elliot to say, hey, I have a stage, I have a gig for you. <laughs> it was so horrible, but so funny too. And um, I start uh, with Shlagi Daddy, my drag brothers, with, which is still my uh, colleague, All right. my brother too now, and with uh, another person, Lorraine Vitriol. And we start because we really want to uh, share a message on stage. And to at that time it was uh, to help mostly uh, LGBTQ migrants, and so we took some stages on dirty drag and uh, with bad makeup, and we create political uh, mix of music, and uh, and the main goal it was to uh, raise money and uh, and to give it uh, directly to uh, queer migrants. When was it? Uh, it was 2019. Okay, so it's like really uh, recent, before COVID, yeah? Just just before COVID yeah. uh, happened. Did you do something during COVID, during the confinement? I don't know if it's very legal to say that because it's so illegal. <laughs> but I will say it, I don't give a shit. Uh, yeah, so I we start, but you know, it was a fact for um, more radical queers and, uh, and trans people that COVID is a bad thing, like for everyone. It was like so, so fucking uh, difficult, even for money and uh, and all the medical issue. But for people who are in the border of the society, people like every time exclude, like we don't have place on that society. That when the states raise the wall even even higher, for us is the same because it was already too high for us. So a lot of my friends are part of the squat uh, environment in uh, in Brussels and oh. so we just connecting with a lot of trans artists and uh, and we start to make a tour in the middle of the pandemic uh, but we tried very like to uh, to respect uh, all the barriers the gestures and uh, to stay mm-hmm. safe and uh, and to, to be like very careful it was all about to uh, to have contact together and uh, and to share our culture and uh, and all the audience was mainly in the beginning trans too so it was just communion, and we knew that there is a lot of there was a lot of risk at the time, but in the same time, it was so difficult for us for the mental illness for for everything that fuck 
we just did it and uh I, I know that maybe for some people it's like oh it's not good behavior it was dangerous but in the same time it was that or stay alone at our places and uh yeah, I'm sure that there was not a lot of uh, support from uh, the government towards your mental health support. So, <laughs> so yeah, but just, uh, okay, 2019, and I heard you saying a lot of times political, political. So did something happen that made you want to do political art or art with political message? I think for myself, uh, it was it's maybe stupid, but... Uh, it's uh, by watching a series uh, when we rise mm -hmm. the, okay. uh, at the end of one of the episode, uh, some of the the characters say like, but to a younger one like, but what do you do now? Like, like we we speak about AIDS and uh, HIV. We uh, we have like a wedding. We have a, like we can engage the army. But what do we do now? Like, how do you stay in the country? Like, how do you augment the the rights? How do you uh, establish a society for us? And that sentence, like, like, poof, in my mind, and I was like, yeah, like, I, I do nothing. I actually, I do nothing for my, for my, uh, for my community, and uh, and I, and I'm just so lucky and so privileged to like, I have my, I have my both parents. I'm white, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm born with a penis. Like, so many things that I can't do. Think like I can use my privilege to, to, uh, to help. Also myself, but everyone else, and uh, and so that's why I, I start to do that. And for me, it was like quite obvious to uh, to do that in drag because it was like very like oh wow, it's so beautiful. <laughs> so, and so like like people hear you when you when when you when you are in drag, so it's mm -hmm. maybe it's more easy. And then it happens to start like that. Then in 2019, uh, with a uh, uh, quite a lot of person, we start to uh, go on the pride of belgian pride yeah. to say like uh actually it's not okay like to have the nvr to have the even the social party who say which has like very like uh bad words against prostitution to have the the rights movement the mr which like was against the gay rights 20 years ago okay. like uh and all the brands and all the the pink washing and shit uh -huh. and, and when we arrived at the in the cortege, but like so peacefully, like it was like just boop, 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 and the uh, police like block us, beat us, and maybe it's the fact that the police beat me on the floor and gas me during three hours that creates something and me like very I'm still angry about that and uh and that feeling like never stop. Can we talk about this a bit? Like what happened with the police? I didn't get it. They they arrested you. No, they didn't arrest anyone. They block all the band, the group, like 100 per person during three hours, but in the middle of the pride. So like everyone saw us. That's the, that's the, that's the main shit of, of the events. Like, like all the gays see us and uh, it was like so, so horrible. Oh, wow. Oh. And that was in 2019 pride. Yeah. Yeah, with the, the Cortege Vener, Reclaim the Pride. Wow, were there any articles or anything afterwards, which like... Yeah, it was, but uh, mainly uh, one, I, I don't remember the name, but I, I know that one uh, press like give us like very like advice, it was Vice Magazine, we, like, we say like very like, we tell the story from the beginning and it was like so, so true. But the rest was like, oh, I remember FTBF, like, it was so shitty, like in 2019 in Belgium, like oh, you, oh, you can like write wrong thing about gays, like okay. Like, and I, for example, they say that the policeman like gets us, but then give us product for the eyes. Like like I remember, I was a drag queen, I was in drag with all the glitters and received gas. Like I was like screaming, like no one's helped me except my community. So it, it was so, it was a very a shitty day, but in the same time, it's. The, that day, like for me, like create something very special, which I start a bit to not feeling okay with the cisgender person in general, but not everyone, but to have like some nah. okay. Uh, but in the same times, in the same time, like it was a beautiful and so full love day with all the community present and all the the radicals and and we helped so much, like just with giving a waffle, like, just giving a bottle of water. It was like wow, just deep.
what uh, happened that the police started uh, like blocking you? Whoa, whoa. I don't really know because I still we, we still have no answer from the Belgian pride. That's why oh. a lot of us like we are angry because still yeah. three years after we have no answer. They didn't talk about that and they don't want to. Okay. Uh, but uh, we just was in the cortege, but actually it's not okay. It's like just legal point. We can't go in the cortege if you're not uh, subscribed before. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So just a legal point, but for us, it was no no way to, to subscribe. Like Pride is a riot. Pride is just a riot. So it's not like a, like a holiday camp, you know? Yeah, yeah, I get it, yeah. That's why now I prefer to just be, uh, to do my activist on stage. Is like there? I'm, yeah. I'm scared of, of policemen of now, like, even like when I heard a siren at a pompon, I'm just scared, but scared as fuck every time, every every freaking time. So that yeah. did change a lot, and uh, it's a big motivation on my work. Is there someone who inspires you in this direction to fight for your community, to show up for your community? Uh, I think a lot, but first my drug daddy, which was before my drug daddy was like uh, for me and one of the best icon I have, like it's King Baxter. Mm -hmm. It's uh, they have a way to uh, to just say beautifully what the community is about, mm -hmm. what are what is love, what is what is angry, like so deep songs and uh, and beautiful. Mm -hmm. Then all the rest, like I have like a lot of inspiration. I think like uh, La Goulu herself, the 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 the, the one of the Moulin Rouge. Mm -hmm. All the big activists, Sylvia Rivera, Omar Shafi Jensen, Divine, and mostly also the, uh, but the, the mainstream icon like Lisa Monet, the French uh, uh, porn actress and singer, or Donatella Versace, like also like all the women, like uh, like people think they are too too loud. I really love them. <laughs> and uh, what's next for you? Like, what are you planning to do next? So it's gonna be. Uh, I I I know, but uh, I I'm not sure because like now I stop. I will stop kitchen in uh, two months. So I will have a lot of time, and I'm and I love to work. So I think for playback it's gonna be huge, uh, bigger, and for not just one per month, but I, I would love to uh to create like a lot of different playback like for brunch for example. People don't expect drag, political drag mm -hmm. everywhere because like they, I think they're, they're more about like cabaret or, or more um, uh, mainstream speech. Yeah. And say like people are now like ready, even like the straight bar, which where I do a playback, they are so okay and so ready to hear about our stories. Like they want it too. And, uh, and so I want to like put drag politic everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Playback is your little organization, which is like a soiree where you do open, it's kind of open stage, right? Where you can give it to somebody else as well. It's not, a, it's a big project, not a little. Uh, uh, Playback is uh, my new show, uh, which is a show um, for now, uh, who happens in uh, straight bars mostly. Um, where uh, during one night, the people of the bar, the usual uh, straight people in the bar, can mix with our community, the okay. queer person, during a show, a drag show, with mostly iconic drag of old Belgium. So I mix, I would love to mix like old school and new school, uh, like trannies and, uh, and weirdos, but also like um, pageant queens, mm -hmm. and, uh, but in a mix in one party, and also one baby drag, and uh, and then it's political as fuck, but also entertainment, because like it's also if you just go and push like political, political, political in front of straight people, person, they they're gonna leave. So it it needs to be a bit like beautiful too, and uh, and entertainment. How so can somebody get on playback on 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 the show? For an artist? Yeah. Uh, for now, I'm the only to uh, manage the art direction because I, I, I used to be in collective and, uh, and now I realize that if I want to do it quickly and, uh, and easily because like I'm alone 
on board. So uh, I have to like go on my way. And so I've uh, already, I think, I prepared uh, the next six months lineup uh, because I love to work. And uh, and so it's difficult. I choose honestly. I choose. I know. I I now I, I begin to know a lot of drag in Belgium. Not all, but a lot. I put because it's very important to level like la like, maybe like some drag like very like not cabaret mademoiselle, but also like drag very cabaret mademoiselle. And you know it's a mix of everyone. So I, I plan in, in a year to very to to manage it and uh, and to have the perfect mix every time for the days do you do anything specific in a day like what's your schedule because yeah now you have two two jobs so like how someone can manage it in a day <laughs> <laughs> for no do you like wake up do you like wake up at i don't know 5 a.m and the 5 a.m club and you're like okay i'm gonna do that 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 so <laughs> My cat wake, wake, uh, wakes me up at 6, 6.30 sometimes. Uh-huh. And uh, then it's a uh, it's restaurant until like uh, 4 p.m. And then it depends. It's meetings for drag or shows or uh, preparation of the shows. But each day it's like a restaurant and drag then. Yeah. And it's difficult. I, I really want... At, from Augustus, when I will be like without a restaurant job, to have like yoga moment, uh, sport every f- the, the Monday, f- uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, sport the, the three first day, and uh, stuff like that. I don't know if I will do it, but uh. taking into consideration your uh, inspiration, taking to, taking into consideration your experience that you had on the Pride, the fact that you're right now having two jobs. How do you manage your mental health? I think it's very important to kind of stay sane within those all those tasks that you do. So what helps you to relax? I'm not sure, but I stopped partying uh, one year ago. And by partying, is not, uh, I, I continue to sometimes take some drinks and, uh, and uh, listen to music and a party, but uh, uh, I stopped the bad things and uh and to stay too many times in parties and uh and works helped me so much but so much and drag mostly like like i, I can go to still i still go to party but to work and uh and so like i, I don't go back to my bed like uh, like that but just with a ugly face because i i had makeup all the day but uh that's actually that's i don't know if it's sane but it helped me a lot mm-hmm. To work uh, for uh, makeup, do you do it yourself? Like, and the the outfits, do you sew? I sew, I glue, I buy, but yeah, I do everything. I I, I really want for the skills like to uh, improve everything, and uh, and because there is a big show now in Belgium, and uh, which is Drag Race, but uh, I I want to improve everything because like it's also like you like you know. I think you know that drags is fucking expensive, and um, and it you don't receive that much money as drags, and then that's why I really want to uh, like to to know everything, like to, how to uh, how to uh, to do a wig, how to uh, how to sew and create yourself means also like save your money and uh, and start to also have a life because like you can't like give too much money to your own job. Is now how it works. Absolutely. Drag is very expensive. When I see sometimes also among my friends who do drag, I'm like, okay, you spend that for that? Okay, good luck then. Good luck with uh, uh, closing your months correctly <laughs> with the profit. Yeah. Uh, what advice do you have for someone who wants to do political art or who just wants to do art? I will say like, uh, uh, listen to yourself. And what you want, what you really want, but not what you think people want from you. Mm-hmm. And uh, and don't be scared. Like take the mic. Uh, don't be scared to uh, to be silly. And uh, like we all start somewhere. And mostly the the biggest star are mostly than you. And uh, and something like that. And also like if you don't have a place, and people don't allow you, like as not allowed, create yourself create your own stage. Like people are, I think are, are bored or old thing. 
and uh, they want something authentic. So just, I think a baby, a baby, a drag baby now is is even more interesting than an iconic drag. Mm. Love that. What was the most uplifting moment for you so far? I will say uh, it was a bit the Olympia of Not Allowed uh, when the Recyclart uh, asked us to uh, play. And uh, so it was the Recyclart, the place in Brussels. Okay. Uh, the ah, yeah, the, okay, I got it, yeah. And, uh, and then, so we play from a big, big, big audience. And for us, which were almost like all misfits, playing this secretly in uh, in squats to be like on the day like outside in a big stage beautiful stage with like so many people and we raised so many money that money that day yes. and uh it was like so it was family just pure family moments oh that's nice it was the best christmas in my life even if, if it was in july uh <laughs> But even the way you talk about it, I feel it because you give me already the positivity of it. So I really feel that that was something very meaningful for you. And now something which really was negative. One time we play in a squad. I, I, I don't want to see the name because it's it's not the fault of all the people in the, in the place. And uh, it was a big crow uh, and drunk people and, uh, and most of my uh, drag uh, family, like are saying like poetry or without mic things. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, and it was all about drink and uh, also drug uh, uh, behavior. And it was so uh, horrible and uh, outbreaking to see all my uh, my colleagues, my uh, my drug family, like hurting, hurt on, on stage. Yeah, that I, I can that I can imagine. Yeah. Think a lot about like, is this our place? If even in a in a precarity place we can't be uh, safe, where do we learn? Where do we belong? Mm, going to the main question, who do you want to amplify? Just one name. Yeah. Okay. Uh, of course, I will say my drag daddy, King Baxter. So basically, if somebody wants to work with you, what 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 can make you want to work with somebody? I will say the intention. Uh, I I mostly want to work with like, uh, but I want to work with honest people and uh, and true person. But uh, even if they are not in my community or political investment, uh, I'm glad to work with also like neophytes and uh, and people like, like very far away from my uh, values. But if they agree to respect me and the person which I work. With and uh, that's why I work with trade bars. Like they agree, they agree to like to say yes to all the rules and the, the rules of our community. And uh, so I, f- I will say like intention. Like if it's just to play with some drag dolls, go away. If you, if it's about like respect us and give us some space and work, come to Mama. If uh, someone wants to go to see your show, if someone wants to get in touch with you or just check out what is what you do, where can they find you? I would say my Instagram page because I don't use Facebook. And so it's Playback, the page of my show, or Blanquette Lagoulu on Instagram too. Uh, I'm quite active on social media, so uh, they will find easily (laughs) uh, all the next show and what I do, what I eat on the morning and, uh, and everything. (laughs) <laughs> we are basically at the end uh yeah thank you Blanket. thank you so much for taking your time today really appreciate it i felt the positivity of uh, you telling the story of your inspiration of you sharing your best experience so this is something which also energized me so thank you thank you so much for your kindness <laughs> Thanks a lot for streaming the episode. Don't forget to find Blanket Lagolu on Instagram. Give them some love, give them some likes, follows, go to their performances. And as usual, after every episode, I try to promote an independent artist. And today's guest is Vlu. I met her in Brussels a couple of months ago. And here's her song. <laughs>